Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. Someone on the channel, Michael Phelan, asked me if I could review some low-cost eyepieces since so far I've only reviewed some very expensive eyepieces like the Teleview 10mm Ethos and the Teleview 6mm Delos. He didn't ask me to review any particular eyepiece, just said one that's a little more affordable than a Teleview. So I decided to purchase a Zoom eyepiece for this presentation. I bought this SV Boney 7 to 21 millimeter, one and a quarter inch Zoom eyepiece. I never owned a Zoom eyepiece because as I explained in a previous video, when I started out in astronomy all those years ago, Zoom eyepieces were of very low quality and no serious amateur astronomer would use a Zoom eyepiece back then. Then this summer, an old guy who was giving up astronomy due to some health issues gave me a pair of Mead 8 to 24 millimeter Zoom eyepieces and even though Mead is out of business and this eyepiece is discontinued, I thought it would make a good comparison to the SV Boney Zoom eyepiece of nearly the same specifications. The Mead, when it was available, cost about 99 US dollars, and it's not a bad eyepiece at all. So how does the Mead Zoom eyepiece compare to the SV Boney 7 to 21 millimeter Zoom eyepiece? And is the SV Boney Zoom eyepiece a good value in an eyepiece that I could recommend? First of all, this SV Boney eyepiece, and this model is the SV135, comes in three different configurations of varying fields of view. The field of view on this eyepiece isn't consistent. It narrows on all of the configurations as you zoom in. The least expensive variation has a field of view from 36 degrees to 52 degrees. The middle priced one has a field of view range of 40 degrees to 57 degrees. And the highest priced one has a field of view from 40 degrees to 60 degrees. I bought the middle priced one, the SV Boney 7 to 21 millimeter zoom eyepiece that goes from 40 to 57 degrees field of view. It was about 45 US dollars. The eyepiece has about 18 millimeters of eye relief, which was adequate for me to use with my eyeglasses, though I prefer taking my eyeglasses off and putting my eye right up to the eyepiece if I can. I needed to put the eye cup down to do that, and I noted that the eye cup is very rigid. The eyepiece is suitable for landscape observations, though I didn't use it for that, and also astronomical observations of the lunar surface, details on the planets, nebulae, double stars, and star clusters. The lenses are fully multi-coated with the six element four group optical design and with the standard one and a quarter inch barrel that's compatible with any telescope that accepts one and a quarter inch eyepieces. The rubber eye guard was a little stiff as I said but good enough for comfortable viewing and blocking stray light. It has a full metal body and 40 to 57 degree field of view, 57 degrees at the lowest magnification of 21 millimeters and 40 degree field of view at the maximum magnification at 7 millimeters. And the barrel accepts one and a quarter inch filters which I will not be using in my testing because it's too light polluted where I intend to do my testing to see any diffuse nebulae. So I'll be looking at the moon, a couple of planets, some double stars, and maybe a planetary nebulae or a globular cluster if I can find them <laughs> to observe. Here's what I'll be using. This 8-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope it has a 2032 millimeter focal length. And I'm going to be looking at the moon and at Saturn and Jupiter. And since the moon is 68% illuminated, I didn't think I'd try to look at anything else because I wasn't sure if I could see anything else but I'm going to look at a star cluster too because I can't see Jupiter or Saturn 
that's blocked by a tree. And as soon as it gets from behind the tree, we'll look at that. While we're waiting, let's look at M38. It's a star cluster in Auriga. It's the largest but the dimmest of the star clusters. It's magnitude 6.4, and I have it in this wide angle eyepiece, and it looks pretty good actually. I'm in a Bortle 7, so very light polluted. And not only that, but there is quite a bit of dew this evening. But now that I have it in there, let's start with the SV Boney and see how it looks, and then I'll see how that looks compared to this Mead. Okay, M38 did not look good in either eyepiece because it's it's big. It's an open star cluster. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the eyepieces, but looks better in a wide field eyepiece. But Saturn has emerged from behind that tree and looks pretty nice in this <laughs> SV Boney. I'm at 21 at the moment and I can see a couple of the moons. Right now, the rings are nearly edge on, and it looks pretty sharp. So now I'm gonna zoom to seven, and you do have to refocus with this eyepiece when you zoom. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that looks really nice really really nice pretty good okay let's see how that compares to the mead i have to keep these eyepieces in my pocket because there's so much dew out here it's just terrible and i'm sorry about the noise it's uh it's an urban area okay now let's look at saturn with this mead Start out at 24, and it is tiny. Tiny, tiny. Now, let's zoom in to eight millimeters. Um, it doesn't look as sharp, but I want to make sure that's not because dew got on it, because there's a lot of dew. No, it's not as clean as the SV Boney, because the SV Boney is brand new. Okay, now it looks better. Could have just been some turbulence. It's a little bit sharper in the SV Boney, but let me make sure this goes down to seven, and that was eight millimeters. That's pretty close. Mm, no, it just looks a little bit sharper. It could be because this eyepiece is very clean. <laughs> it's the first time I've used it. And I didn't clean the mead before this test. I probably should have. That looks really nice. You know what, I'm gonna go in the house and clean this. Okay, I cleaned the mead and now Saturn looks really good in this mead. Very sharp and clear. Um, so I would say the mead and the SV Boney look about the same. I don't see any big, huge differences. I don't know if this will be helpful, but now I'm gonna try to take a picture of Saturn with each eyepiece at the maximum magnification. And like I said, they're not exactly the same. The mead only goes to eight millimeters and the SV Boney goes to seven millimeters. Okay, I can take a picture <laughs> with my phone, but I don't have a way to control the um, exposure. Um, this 
phone's not that fancy. Um, and it's a little overexposed, so I'm not sure how helpful this will be. And also, I don't have a shutter release, which is critical, but <laughs> I'll take it anyway and show you. <laughs> And uh, this is with the SV Boney, and after I get this picture, I'll get one with the Mead. Okay, Jupiter just came up, and I'm looking at it with the Mead at eight times magnification, and it looks very nice. Very nice. Now, let's try it with the SV Boney. It looks a little bit sharper in the mead. It might be because 294 times is a little bit <laughs> too much magnification, but it looks nice, very nice. They both look nice. They're very similar. I just think this Jupiter looks a little sharper than it does in this SV Bowden. Okay, now I'm looking at M2, globular cluster in Aquarius magnitude 6.5 and it's a perfect object for medium to high power so i'll look at it first with this sb bony and then i'll zoom in with this and then i'll look at it with the meat okay i'm starting at 95 times magnification or something like that um okay it looks pretty good now let's Zoom in on it. Mm. At the highest magnification of 290, it doesn't look that good, so I'm going to back down a little bit to make it the same as the highest magnification on the Mead, which is 254 times. Mm. It looks good, but uh, I've seen it better, but I'm not in a very good observing place. But let's see how the mead does. And also, as you can see, it's not very high in the sky. It's not the mead. Okay. The mead is lowest magnification is about 85 times all right that looks pretty good okay that's the highest magnification Looks a little bit better, even when I backed off on the SV Boney, but um, not a huge difference, but I would give the edge to the mead on this one. Now I have NGC 7009 in here, which is even lower, <laughs> and uh, it's a planetary nebula. So I'm going to look at it with the SV Boney. And see how much I can magnify because planetary nebulae need to be magnified. Right now it has a distinct blue color. And let's see. Well, that was the highest magnification. At the lowest, it just looks like a star, really. And the highest magnification, I can, I can see that it's elongated, that's pretty good. And it looks bluish. Let's see how it looks in the mead. Okay. 
It looks non-star like and bluish. I think I can make out the handles. It looks like it. It looks less blue for some reason. I don't know why. At 254 times magnification. It has more of a baby blue color. That's strange, but not unheard of. Okay, I would say it looks about the same in both eyepieces. Okay, I looked at Jupiter with both eyepieces and it looked quite nice in both. Again, I would call it a toss-up and I have no complaints. It looked really nice. It'll be at opposition in a month. Okay, I easily split Rigel A and B with both eyepieces, even with that light on. And it looks nice in both of them. And it's a nice object for a light polluted area <laughs> like I'm in right now. Well, the SV Boney held up well against the Mead Zoom eyepiece, although there were several times when I thought that the Mead eyepiece was sharper and provided more contrast. But overall, the SV Boney had decent edge and center sharpness more so than some inexpensive plossal eyepieces that I've used. When viewing with the SV Boney, the objects had high brightness and were mostly very clear, and the eyepiece was comfortable to use, and I was able to obtain a lot of details on most of the objects that I observed. The open star cluster that I started out with was too big <laughs> for an eyepiece like this and not a good object. It was more for a wide field eyepiece. An eyepiece like this is really meant for objects requiring high magnification, like craters on the moon, the planets, planetary nebulae, and splitting tight double stars, things like that. It was easy to go from low magnification to high magnification by turning the barrel and it stayed there until I was ready to change it again. I was pleasantly surprised at how well this little inexpensive eyepiece performed. My conclusion is that the price of only about 45 US dollars for the SV Boney Zoom eyepiece is an excellent value for the money and I would recommend this as an excellent budget eyepiece. The Mead Zoom eyepiece also performed well, a little bit better than the SV Boney and is also an excellent choice, but since Mead went out of business, I'm not sure where you could find an eyepiece like this Mead. But I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the SV Boney 7-21mm Zoom eyepiece. Dark skies forever, Sula, signing off. And finally, Michael Phelan, if you would like to have this SV Boney Zoom eyepiece as a way of saying thank you for suggesting this video, all you have to do is email me your mailing address within seven days of publication of this video, and this eyepiece is yours. If I don't hear from you, I'll just keep it. <laughs>